tricks I want to help you out with. Um, remember, when we're doing this, we've got to remember our quadratic form, ax squared plus bx plus c. So when I draw my little triangle, my little dot here, yeah, it's not a triangle, is it? I have my c up top, my b on bottom, c I'm going to multiply, b I'm going to add. My c is my number in front, which is the negative 56, and my b is my number in front of my w. Now, we don't see a w, we don't see a number in front of there, like, uh, like we usually have. So just remember, if you don't see a number in front, we can always remember that one times that variable is going to equal that variable. So I can, my number actually in front is going to be a one because w equals one times w or one times w equals w. So if you're seeing this, understand that you could always have a one in front of it. So now what we're going to do is I need to figure out what two numbers multiply to give me negative 56, but add to give me a positive 1. Now there's a couple of tips and tricks I want to look, help you look out when you're trying to think of these. First of all, my number is negative, right? So I need to multiply two numbers to get a negative number. That means one of my factors has to be negative, the other one has to be positive, right? If they're both positive, I would have a positive you know, product. If they're both negative, I'd have a positive. So when I write negative 56, I can either write, let's work on the first term, which is always the easiest, negative 56 times 1 or 56 times negative 1. Now make sure you write both of these because there's a big difference. Because they both multiply to give you negative 56, but when you add these, there's a difference. Negative 56 plus 1 is negative 55. 56 plus a negative 1 is a positive 55. So there's a big difference. However, I just said negative 55 or positive 55, right? We're looking for 1. So I go down the list and I say, okay, um, how about 28 times 2 times negative 2 and negative 28 times 2? Do any of those, when added up, equal 1? No. How about 8 times, oh, I can do, I'm sorry, 14 times 4 or negative 4? Negative 14 times 4? Do those add up? No. How about 8 times negative 7 or negative 8 times positive 7? And yes, they do. Now, the one thing to notice, uh, you can start doing these in your head and think about them. Look at your middle term. If that's positive and you have a negative C term, if your middle term is positive, then the, fact, the larger factor also has to be positive. Okay? So therefore, I automatically know that 8 had to be the positive one. When I looked at this problem, I first did it. Since this was negative, I know I had to have a positive and a negative. But when my middle term was positive, I knew that the larger factor had to be positive. So therefore, I have a positive 8 and a negative 7. I rewrite this as two binomials. It's going to be w plus 8 times w minus 7. And remember, why do we use the w? Because remember, when we do FOIL, we multiply our first two terms. w times w gives us w squared. Our last term, 8 times negative 7, gives us negative 56. And then when we do this to FOIL to check our answer, that will give us our middle terms. All right? And that's it. Have fun. All right.